If you have the Apple Watch Series 4 and later, including the Apple Watch SE, watchOS 10.2 is available for you to be able to update to. And in this video, we are simply going to be looking at the new features and changes that this update has to offer. On my device right here, if we go into the settings right there and then go to general and go to software update, WatchOS 10.2 comes in at 226 megabytes. It's slightly smaller than usual. And the reason for this is because I was testing this update on a beta and now this is the final release. And if you are going to be updating to it for the first time, expect the update size to be averaging around five to 600 megabytes. With WatchOS 10.2, the release notes that Apple tells us is actually that of WatchOS 10. So they are yet to update this i'm not sure why they're holding back but now i've downloaded this update and i'm now i'm just going to install it on my apple watch and then we'll see what watchOS 10.2 has to offer if we go into the settings go to general and then go to the about this watch version you can see watchOS 10.2 and the build number that i have on file is 21s 364. Now, if you are already on the beta and you don't see this exact build number, there's probably an updated beta that's out that you didn't update to. And if you want to have the public release or this version that I'm on, you can continue with the beta because you see it as an RC version. Or if you switch off the betas, then you get it as the official version since it will have a newer build number than what you currently are on. Now let's go ahead and look at the new features and changes that are in here within watchOS 10.2. So the first one that I want to show you here, you probably see it. You see how I can swipe to be able to change my watch face and be able to, you know, swipe. This is something that was always there and was always existing with the previous watchOS 9, but with watchOS 10 and 10.2 to be specific, they give you the option to either turn that off or be able to turn it on if that's something that you would like to do. Now, the way you do this, if you are not seeing it by default when you update to watchOS 10.2, is to basically go into your settings and then enable this. So go into settings and then go to where it says clock under settings. And from under that section, you'll be able to see this section here that says swipe to switch watch face. If you switch it off and then you go back to the watch face page, you can see it won't switch and it won't change. So now you have to press and hold. And now if you go to this section, you can see you are able to change with the new updated version. But if you want to be able to go back, you have to go into your settings and make sure that this is turned on. And now you can now basically be able to switch or swipe to be able to change your watch face. A lot of people that accidentally find themselves swiping watch faces, maybe will want to be able to leave this off so that you don't accidentally swipe or change your watch face. But for those that pretty much are used to it and want the old feature back. This is something that they are going to appreciate. Now, also something that's updated within this update with watchOS 10.2 has to do with Siri and search. And since this device that I'm using is the original Apple Watch Ultra one, it's not going to be more prominent. This is more prominent in the Series 9 and the new Apple Watch Ultra 2, which have on device Siri that allows them to process voice commands faster since they are processed on device. And you have more use of metrics and more health data that you can ask. So I'm going to try this on the series uh, Ultra Series 1. For example, how many steps did I get yesterday? Okay, so it doesn't really tell me how many steps I got, but it takes me to the activity workout tab and you can ask something like, did I close my exercise rings on Friday? Okay, so it shows you your exercise ring. If I do something, um, what's my current heart rate? So right now you can see it opens the heart rate app and it's measuring 
and four minutes ago i had 73 beats per minute but right now my current heart rate is 76 so this is not something that you're going to be able to get full usage or full experience of if you don't have the two latest apple watch series 9 and apple watch ultra 2 but with the old apple watch ultra that i have here and with the other apple watch series i believe series 6 all the way to series 8 you do get a little bit of an improvement when it comes to siri and search also something that's here with this update that i would like to show you has to do with contact key verification and this is basically meant to be used in iMessage if you are messaging with people that are more at higher risk of cyber attacks like journalists or activists you can use this feature to basically verify whether you are talking to the right person on the other end and the way you turn it on since it carries over across all your devices it's pretty simple to actually turn on so you have to go into your settings on your iphone and then if you click on your apple id right there i'll just click it and if you go all the way down you can see here we have contact key verification if you click there and if you turn on this contact key verification, you notice you can continue to set up this contact key verification and it will tell you which list of devices that you have won't be supported by or won't be able to use this feature. For example, my iPhone 6s, it doesn't support iOS 17.2, so it will need it, it says this device cannot be updated to the latest version so that means it won't be supported and now if i click ok then it will turn it off until i decide to get updated versions or if i want to keep an older version or turn it on and remove this device in settings then it will remove it from my device list but this is how you turn it on or if you want you can go into your messages i'll just go do this off screen and if you go into a specific chat that you have for example you notice this one that i have with lumba uh, tech Rific, right here if we click where it says contact key verification you can see we have the option to allow contact key verification and it basically takes you through the same stages and commands so that's something that i thought i should highlight also something to keep in mind is that when it comes to this update it makes minor improvements to name drop so for example i would just bring my devices together like this so you notice it makes the name drop animation for some reason it triggered my apple pay we'll try that again name drop so yeah it makes the sound and this is kind of weird because every time i'm triggering name drop it gives me this option where it says double click to pay so not sure why it's glitching out i wonder if i was to bring it this side and we'll see if it will be able to bring the name drop animation okay so because i've been doing it wrong for the most part you can see here on this device it actually gives you like a command and animation that shows you how you're supposed to bring it together if it's apple watch to apple watch you do that face to face and then if it's iphone to apple watch it's meant to come from the top like this and it shows you that animation that's more of a guide on how you can do name drop and generally you can see right here when i do it the right way now it always gives me this animation if i do it from the side or from this side i wasn't getting this animation but because these two devices are paired on my apple id and they have the same contact information so that's why it's not transferring any information or prompting me to allow to send some of the information something to be aware of that's new with this update and also on the iphone as well as the latest homepod update is that if you have a homepod second gen or the homepod mini that's playing media and you come within proximity approximately two meters from the device on your apple watch while your home pod is playing you get the now playing screen that will show up and it will gives you like media options to be able to control your apple music or your apple podcast now keep in mind that the more media you listen to on your home pod and you come close or the more media you play on your iphone then your iphone is basically going to have the now playing screen and that 
most of the time leads to battery usage on your Apple Watch. And also if you connect your AirPods to your iPhone and you use them to listen to music, since with WatchOS 10, it basically connects the AirPods to all devices so that continuity and auto transfer over works. The more media you listen to on your iPhone, on your Apple Watch, on your MacBook, you will see the now playing here when you switch over and that will also affect your battery life on the Apple Watch. So if you don't want to affect the battery life because of the now playing screen, you can basically be able to switch off the Bluetooth or disable that auto play and auto transfer over feature. Now, if you are an Apple Fitness Plus subscriber and you engage in a workout, and you are viewing or following along to a specific workout the good thing is that this update allows you to be able to prioritize the music or the trainer's voice when you are engaged in a session now since i don't have that i won't be able to show you but it's good to know and also this update fixes a number of bugs and issues and one of them has to do with different watch faces that you might have and try to add to your device so for example if you if you had seen a watch face like this one and you want to add it to your apple watch there was an issue where before when you add this watch face to your apple watch it wasn't transferring over and you can see basically that issue has been fixed and now it's loading data and since this is a third party Apple Watch, it just took a moment to be able to show up. And I did a complete video where I explain how I get this different watch faces that show all this information. And uh, just keep in mind that all that glitters is not gold. It might look fancy and have like different watch faces here and ask me to rate them as after I add watch faces. But yeah, check out that video. And basically that's all the new features and changes that watch always 10.0 two has to offer let me know what you think about this video and if you're going to be updating to watch always 10.2 right away the moment it just comes out and uh stay safe and i'll see you in the next video peace